morning, everybody. I'm Leslie Hucker, and this is the Michigan Notary Network. We are together here with Debbie, our host on Detroit Debs 1719 on YouTube. This is where it goes. Um, we have a guest today, and her name is Chrissy Zambas. And Chrissy is a social media expert. She is a goal setter, and she helps you figure out how to make your goals. You can set any goal you want, but if you don't have a plan to achieve it, you're not going to achieve it. So you can't say, I want to be just like whomever and then think it's going to happen. There is a lot to be said about putting it out in the universe, but you can put it in the universe. You have to actually work for it. So Chrissy has um, a plan to help us plan. And I'm going to turn the meeting over to Chrissy. And um, Chrissy, if you want to talk about yourself first and then tell us how to reach those goals. Yep. So thanks for having me. I'm super excited. And kind of like you said, I am doing my business planning presentation. A lot of times I do this with real estate agents. So most of it, I think is going to be relevant with the numbers part, but there are some pieces we may just skip over. We're going to kind of dive in. I think we do this for an hour, correct? All right. So lots of information that we're going to try to fit into an hour. So we're going to breeze through some things and then dive in. The goal at the end is that everybody walks out with an idea and a way to help build their business um, with the things that you're comfortable with doing and the things that you're willing to commit to. So everybody's business plan is going to be a little bit different. Things are going to be a little different on the way you do it. And that's completely okay. That's how you want it. One of the things when I started doing this a long, long, long time ago, as I realized, can everybody hear me? Okay. Deborah looks like she's yeah. frozen. So I just wanted to make sure. I hear you. Corinne. That's my Corinne. picture. <laughs> okay. I was like, you look frozen. And I'm like, okay, am I being frozen right now? Um, okay. So, um, so we're going to dive in and we'll do this. But the, the goal is, is if I told you to do something in your business plan that you weren't comfortable with doing like cold calling, the reality is, is you're not going to do it and it's not going to help you. So there's not going to be a lot we can do. One of the things I do ask, I know everybody has got their video off. No one wants to show their beautiful faces this morning, but I do ask for participation just because again, this is for you guys and um, you know your business and your comfort levels and your comfort zones. So I do ask you guys to kind of jump in and share some things just so that we can all build this together. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen. <coughs> Thank you for showing your face. Oh. All right. And please, anybody, I don't know what your rules normally are on here. Um, if you are, um, if you have questions, if you need anything, please just stop me at any time. And if I put this into presenter mode, you guys go away and then I can't see you and I don't like to not see you. So I am not going to put it in presenter mode today. I'm just going to open it up so that it's like across my screen. All right. Can everybody see it? Good. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with business planning and kind of what business planning is. We've created some documents to be able to help um, build a business plan and um, help you grow. So to start the business plan, one of the first things I like to touch on, which probably sounds weird, is building a brand and kind of knowing who you are and what you're looking for and who your target audience is. This is a very small snippet of a brand questionnaire that I give to my clients when we're really working on like building social media and business plans and talking to people because part of your business plan is exactly how you talk to people and grabbing the audience that you want to grab and work with. So when you're thinking about building a brand, you want to know what kind of personality you have. How do you make your clients feel? Why do they trust you? Words that describe you, that describe your brand. What do you want to be known for? What are your goals over the next five years? And what does your current voice of your brand sound like? And this is really important to kind of dive in. I do have the full brand questionnaire. I put my contact information in the chat. So you have access to my cell phone and my email. If you want these documents emailed to you and the brand questionnaire, just shoot me a text message with your name and your email and let me know and I'll send that everything over to you. But when you're looking at these things, the one thing I tell people is this doesn't take two minutes to build. This is not something like, oh, I have a super fun personality. Oh, I make my clients feel great. They trust me because they know me and they like me. It's you've got to dig deeper. So really diving into who you are, why you bring value to these people. And I'm going to go into an example that I recently got, and it just gave me all of the feels. So I use it with every presentation that I do now. When I was working with the real estate company doing this, one of the guys, one of the real estate agents was like, I love kids. Like, 
I literally love them. I think they're cool. And when they're a part of the process, it's like, it literally just makes my heart happy. And I do everything I can to include them into the process. So part of his brand is kid friendly. And the reality is, is when you think about a real estate agent, have you ever heard one real estate agent in the world say, I'm kid friendly? Well, what the heck does that mean? He brings things for the kids. When they're looking at houses and they're getting closer, he talks to them about their rooms and what it's going to look like and what colors they would paint their rooms. And as they're on showings and they're doing things, he's got things to distract them and engage them and keep them not bored looking at 10 different houses. So When you think of being different and unique, what's different and unique about you that makes you stand out? Any questions on that? No, I think that's genius of him, though. It is. I use it every time I do this presentation. I'm like, this guy is kid friendly. It's amazing. So I love it. Yeah. And again, anybody that has questions, wants to comment, just jump in. Like, there are no rules when I'm doing this. So. All right. So one of the things that I like to dive in, I'll go through this one a little bit more deeply than I will the next couple ones, but we won't focus a ton of time, but really making the numbers work. So on here, if a lot of you, if this is your primary business and what you're doing, and if it's not, and you're trying to make this your primary business, one of the most important things is knowing what your non-negotiable yearly income needs to be. So when I work with real estate agents, I love when everybody's faces are shown because when I work with agents, I always tell them, if I sit down with a real estate agent and say, hey, what's your like income goal? Like, what do you have to hit? There is one of two answers I get every single time with a real estate agent. It's 100,000 or 150,000. There's no deviation from that. (laughs) And so when I dive in and I ask them, okay, so if you don't hit 100 or you don't hit 150, are you okay with that? Like, can you still survive? And 99.9% of them say, well, yeah, well, then that's not your non-negotiable. What do you need to make in order to survive and keep this or make this your primary focus? And a lot of times it ends up being that most of them need 40 or 50 or 60,000 and that's it. They don't need that 150. That's just what they want to do, which would be great. But in order to keep them in their business and not having to go to a nine to five with an hourly job, this is what they need to make. So think of what your non-negotiable yearly income needs to be, and then figure out what you need to do in order to make that. So again, this might be a little bit more real estate heavy um, driven, but think of what you make on each transaction, divide that by the like income that you need to make. So if you need to make 60,000 and you make 500, divide it by, and then you figure out each month, I need to do X amount of business. This is what I've got to do. And you know, then- that makes so much sense because that is it is two different goals it's the want and the need totally different yes thank you for that well and what I love about this what everybody's going to see as we start to dive in what I love about this is your non-negotiable we literally set it up and then we put it to the side because as we start to build out your business plan what you will find is that your non-negotiable actually becomes so ridiculously achievable if you actually put this plan into place you exceed your goal. So the way I was taught this by a really, really good and successful business coach that actually travels all over the United States and does a lot of um, speaking events and training is that if you were to climb Mount Everest or you decided today, I'm going to climb Mount Everest. Has anybody on this um, call ever tried to climb any mountains? Anyone? (laughs) All right. (laughs) I I have yet to have someone say they have, but one of these days I'm going to get shocked. Um, But if you try to climb Mount Everest, which is the tallest mountain in the world, and you put a business plan together and you said, I've got to do everything and it's got to be 100%. I got to hit every goal and I've got to do, I've got to do, I've got to do. The reality is, is you would probably fall short of it. If you decided to climb the second highest mountain and you built a plan to climb the second highest mountain and everything had to go right and correct in whatever for you to climb it, you'd still probably fall short of that one. But if you built a plan to climb Mount Everest and you aim to hit every single one of those and you were climbing the second highest mountain, chances are you would climb the second highest mountain and you probably would have been able to go a little bit farther. So that's kind of what we're going to do. We're going to build a plan to climb Mount Everest and you're going to probably fall somewhere in between your non-negotiable and like this massive, huge, nice goal up here. So that's what our, our goal is any questions on that nope all righty 
So this one, um, kind of just going through and just taking a look, one of the most important things too with business planning is knowing numbers. And so this is kind of why we focus a little bit on this some, um, with our agents, because knowing your numbers is critical. How many pieces of business did you do last year? Um, what were your production goals? What numbers do you need to achieve your goals? What does your daily schedule look like? And then what are your challenges and solutions? And so these are the things we're going to kind of run through. Again, a lot of this may not um, necessarily fall into your world, but knowing what your business expenses are, what's your closed deals, how many just appointments do you need to go on? How many agents or um actually throw out who is your guys's ideal client like let's talk about that for one second so there's an ideal client and there's a, a steady client so we don't have in being a notary your ideal client is anybody who needs a notarization um but then you, so for notarizations you have to hone it down like what kind of work do you like to do the best so why don't you and i talk about what's um what works for me because my business is 100 percent notary. Um, all my money comes from there. So my ideal client would be an estate planning attorney and I would close all of their estate plans. So, okay. and I love that. And I love that you said that. And I think that's one of the things for everybody on the call to think about is who is your gobs of jobs? Like, and that's the thing because you do have like a wide range of who you can go after and you say like, you know, there's, Anybody that needs notary, but it kind of goes back to the whole branding, but who's your gobs of jobs, people? Is That's it real estate agents? Is it title companies? Is it mortgage? Is it? No, it used to be title companies. Um, but since the downturn, it's not title companies anymore. And that's why I went to um, uh, estate planning attorneys. Perfect. So there's there, there are gobs of jobs come in for me. Like I stay busy every single day working with estate planning attorneys, where and you it, title companies. For sure. And that's the thing. It's being able to like know your audience and pivot and twist as well and not having. So for you guys, there might be, the reality is, is for what you do, there may be one or two business plans and it could be focused on, or it's looking. So you might end up doing this. It's okay to have two or three or four different business plans, figuring out exactly who you want to target and who that audience is. And that's the thing, just being able to kind of like go back and forth or part of as we dive into it might be one bucket's going to focus on this group, one bucket's, bucket's going to focus on this, and one's going to focus on this. So we can definitely adjust these things as needed, but that's the biggest thing is knowing exactly who you need to reach out to, how many appointments do you need to go on, how many people do you need to connect with, how much business do you need from each of them, and knowing your numbers is literally going to be one of the most critical pieces to doing your business because the more that you know and understand your numbers, the more it's going to all like fall into place and make sense. If you in your brain, and so many people do this, if you in your brain think, oh my God, I need 300 people to work with this year, it can be super overwhelming where the reality is, is if it ends up that you only need 20 and you just need to know exactly what they do, because that is actually where your income needs to be. It just makes life so much easier. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Let's go through. I don't. So this one is kind of just the same thing. I'm going to skip over this one because again, it's just numbers, knowing your numbers. You, you guys don't have as detailed of, you know, going on listing appointments. How many do you meet with? How many do you close going on buyer appointments? How many do you meet? blah, 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 blah. But I will right. go through like your goal days um, worked in your goal, like so seven and eight, um, and then your number nine and your number 10. So these are kind of important. So looking at the number of hours per day, the number of days um, worked, your prospecting goals, what your contact goal is, that is super critical. So one of the things when I'm doing this with people a lot too, if you really sit down and look at your schedule and your dailies of what you're doing, how many people are actually focusing 40 hours a, a week on your business? Like, is there anyone truly on this call that can say, I work 40 hours besides you? <laughs> um, a lot of us here um, have full-time jobs and are looking to pivot into uh, full-time notary, maybe as a retirement job, maybe as a, just to get away from the nine to five thing. Um, so 
you know, they're, they still have goals, but they don't have 40 hours to put into being a notary. Well, and that's the thing. So this is what I love about it. I, and I'm going to go so against the grain with people on this one. You don't necessarily need 40 hours to work on your business because here's the reality. Most people aren't even putting three hours. They're not even putting four or five hours in a week on their business. So when you're looking at what you're doing as entrepreneurs and people that are running their own business and doing their own thing, the reality is most people are not putting in any hours. They're doing busy work. They're doing things. They're talking to their family and friends or their comfort zone or their, you know, the real estate agent that they met and, or the title company that they met. And they're having lunches and conversations and they're getting nothing out of it. They're not really honing in on their business and what their business plans are and how they're doing it. So I love it because that's the reality. You don't necessarily, I always tell people, you don't have to work 40 hours in an entrepreneurial business. You just have to work. Um, and that's what a lot of people struggle with. It's, it's doing the money-making activities that actually will help grow your business that most people are not focusing on. And so again, as we start to dive in, that's one of the things where people, after we go through this and I show them how to do it, they're like, oh my gosh, it's not as scary. It's not as freaky. And I'm not as like overwhelmed putting this in because the reality is, is that you don't have to do all of that. No one in any business period, I don't care. Um, you know, Leslie will say yes, but most people are not literally physically just honed in and for 40 hours, they're just plugging away and doing these things. They're working on, but how many times do we go to lunch? We meet with people where, you know, oh, my kids got an event and I'm going to that event and I'm going to watch her dance and I'm going to do this. And I mean, I put a lot of hours in, but it's not, I don't sit down from nine to five to do it. I figure out how to balance my entire life to be able to work around and do the things that I need to do. So what I, is I mean if I'm not working on my business or in my business I'm working on my business it's not it might not all be sitting in front of the computer um, while I'm driving I'm mentally what do I need to do but the good thing is when you are uh, uh, a, an individual business owner you can set your own schedule I'm literally soda right now I am not working this I had to take time for my grandkids to be in this meeting I don't mind doing it but that's the nice thing about building your own business is that you can build into it whatever vacations you want or whatever time off you want to do those casual lunches. They don't all have to be business lunches. Right. And, and that's the thing. That's the biggest part about it, too, is that depending on where you're at and what your end goal is depends on the amount of hours and the time and the energy and the effort that you need to put into it. If you're a sole single parent and you're like running your business and you need to like, I mean, this is it. You're going to have to put more time and energy and effort into it. If this is a second income or it's something where you have a little bit more flexibility and you can do it. And the reality is, again, the biggest part of this as we go through is going to be the money making activities are going to be the biggest thing that if you focus on those a couple hours every day, literally that will be the game changer to take your business to the next level. Okay. All right. Any questions or comments so far? Um. No, I don't think there's any in the chat either. Um, All right, cool. All right, so this is where I am going to, so I did move those around. I just wanted to make sure. So this is where I'm hoping that everybody will kind of start to unmute a little bit and um, help participate in some of this. Um, because again, this is kind of now where all the magic starts to happen and it's your business. So I do need some participation other from than from just Leslie. So hopefully everybody else is comfortable with jumping in. And so some people are driving and some are at work. A lot of times they just listen in, but gotcha. hopefully well, Celine can usually jump in. Sometimes she has her grandson there usually, gotcha. um, but okay. hopefully, hopefully I can jump in the day. It's <laughs> <Okay. laughs> always good for a challenge. Gotcha. And All right, good. And I did. That's cool. I totally get it. If you can't, because you've got something that's cool. So what we're going to kind of dive into now is setting up strategies and activities for your strategies. And this is, again, where your money making activities kind of go in. And if people can't jump in, I'll go through this. Um, but it is so much more advantageous. And you know what, Leslie, if it's you, we'll, we'll role play it with you because that'll be perfect. So 
what you need to do is write down and you don't have to do it right now, but what you want to do is write down what are ways to grow your business. So you need to think of every single way that you can grow your business, whether you're willing to do it or you're unwilling to do it, write it down. And so for always one of the things I hate is I hate cold calling. Like I will be the first person to admit it and I will put it on the table and call it out loud. I hate to cold call. Some people love it. Some people hate it. It needs to go on your paper. The reality is, is no matter what you do, the fastest and easiest way to grow your business is cold calling. And I never, ever, ever, ever used to pitch chat or preach it or anything until I realized the reality is, is if you're in a, a situation that you need to grow your business and it's non-negotiable and non-optional, if you don't want to work a nine to five or you're trying to get out of a nine to five, the reality is this is going to be your fastest way to get business. However, not everybody's going to do it. And if you tell some people you need to get and do it, the reality is that they're going to sit there for eight hours today and look at their phone, not make one phone call, and they've literally done nothing the entire day. So you're going to write down every single way to grow your business, networking, door knocking, cold calling, um, walking into offices. What are some good ways to grow your business? Um, I've got one. Mail. Oh, oh, go, go ahead. Posting on Google business profile. Love it. Keep going. I should do more of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you should. Posting on your social media, like Instagram, uh, Facebook, things like that. Yep. Um, tell people what you do when you're out and about. I've had some good success with that, just in casual conversations and yep. learning the art of opening and closing a, a conversation. <laughs> and Melissa, I love that. I think a lot of people forget about that. I always tell, um, I worked with a real estate agent that used to do that everywhere she went. She let people know she was a real estate agent. And it literally got to the point that she built so many clients and friends. Like she was getting invited. She met a family at, or she met someone that worked at Home Depot. They sent her to her, their family. She ended up helping their family and then helped their entire family. Ended up getting invited to weddings and like parties and Christmas. I mean, like literally built a true friendship. And it was just everywhere she went, she told people what she does. <laughs> Absolutely. You could um, have clothing, logo clothing. Yep. 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 So um, all great ideas. And the reality is sit down and think of every single thing that you can think of every single thing, anything and everything in order to get your business, your current database, your current sphere, um, you know, what, like I said, pop buys, walking into places. And then sit and look at that list and think of what are the three activities that you're willing to commit to? What are three things that you can do that will help you to grow your business? Now, um, I think Celine threw out social media. And I love that one because I'm a social media coach. I do social media. I believe in the power of social media. Um, Facebook is the number one site for recommendations and referrals and everybody should be on it. But as you start to build this out, and I, we'll kind of go through so you'll see how it's encompassing, you're going to look at three strategies. The one strategy everybody always wants to throw on is social media. And I always caution people to throw social media on as one bucket. Because the reality is social media is part of every bucket. You can kind of turn it into an every bucket type of a thing. Um, but it should not be the only bucket because the reality is, is unless you've been doing social media forever and you've built a great following and you've got a ton of people on there, social media is hard to do as one bucket to really grow your business. So if you come over here and you've got, I'm going to, I'm going to try something. We're going to see if this backfires on me. I'm almost positive. I think I have to go into presentation. I was going to say, I think I can write on here, but I don't think I can. Um, Okay, so I'm going to screw it all up and then I'm going to lose everybody. So I'm not going to. All right, so strategy one, let's say that strategy one is cold calling. I'm just going to use that one because it'll be an easy one to kind of give you an example. So on strategy one, you're going to put cold calling and then you're going to start diving into the five things that you need to do to cold call. So who are you going to cold call? You're going to cold call um, estate planners. You're going to cold call title companies. You might cold call some real estate agents. You might cold call a divorce attorney, however, like whoever your audience, whatever you're going to do. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start saying, so we're going to dive in. So Leslie, well, and if somebody else can jump in, go for it. If not, we'll have Leslie. But if you picked up the phone and called a state attorneys today, 
if you just picked up the phone and made 20 calls, is that success for you? Yes. Okay. Tell me why, how that's successful. Um, typically the person who answers the phone is the gatekeeper. I have to make the gatekeeper a happy person before I can get to the attorney. Um, if they have a gatekeeper to me, if I'm calling an, an estate planning attorney, the attorney themselves rarely answer the phone. If they answer the phone, that means they're a one man show. They don't have enough business to need me. And so I want a gatekeeper. That's a success to me because that's when I know that's a, a business that's big enough to use a third party to close their, their uh, estate plans. Okay. So now let's say that you've called 30 estate attorneys. Mm -hmm. You've talked to the gatekeeper mm -hmm. and you said, Hey, this is who I am. Blah, 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 blah. This is what I do. And they said, great. I'll pass the information along. And that's all that ever comes of it. Is that success to you? No, but it would never all, that would never be the thing because I would call back. Perfect. I would follow up with an email and then follow up with an in-person drop-in visit if I can't get her back on the phone. Perfect. So if you follow up and you get them on the phone again, and then you send an email and that's as far as it goes, is that success for you? It is. Say no. Okay. No. All right. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm probably not the right person because I know no, you're right. good. This is exactly the conversations I have okay. with people because once we keep drilling in, this is where I'm totally putting you on the spot. This is where the magic happens. So you call 30 estate planning attorneys. What is your goal out of that? What do My you goal, want to accomplish? I want to meet with that estate planning attorney. I want to give them just enough information that he wants to meet with me or she wants to meet with me so I can sit in front of them and explain what I do and why it's better for their business to use me instead of their in-house notary. Keep going deeper. Okay. I want, I need to help them. Wait a minute, which way going? Am I so having I want you to go deeper? So now you've met with them. You've given them all the information that they need. Oh, What's yeah. the next step? What um, do you want from that? I want the handshake saying we're do, doing business together. Perfect. I want them to have all of my stamp information so that they can put it on their documents when they send it to me to print to go to their clients' homes. Perfect. So now you've done that. They trust you and they like you. How much business do you want to get from them? I want to close every one of their estate plans. Okay. So what you want to do when you're doing this, so this is where I always like to dive in. So I'm like my coach would challenge me like, I want to go to three networking events. And he's like, great. You walked in the door. Was that successful? Like, did you get something out of it? Well, no. Okay. So what do you want? Well, I want to have lunch with three people. Great. You had lunch with them. You guys like loved each other. You hugged and you were like, you're amazing. You're amazing. And you walk away. Is that success for you? Nope, not at no. all. Like, so as you're diving in and you're starting to put your buckets together, go deeper. Like we just did and say, the goal is not to get in front of them. The goal is to get in front of them, <clears throat> but the goal isn't to get in front of them. It's not to give them your information for them to say, Oh my God, you're amazing. And then never get anything out of them. So for every person that you decide you want to meet this year, I want to meet with 50 estate attorney, attorney planning. Wait, I can't talk. I want to meet <laughs> planning attorneys, estate planning attorneys. Um, I want to meet with 50 of them out of the 50 that I meet with. I want to do business with, and this is where your numbers from the very beginning are so critical. I want to do business with what's your conversion rate. So if 50 meetings turns into 30 people doing business with you, I want those 30 people to do business with me. And out of each one of them, I want to get five pieces of um, business that I close. And so here's what my numbers are. So as you do your activities of this one activity, I'm going to call 150 estate planning attorneys. I need 75 of them to turn into people that refer business. Out of 75 that refer business, I want three. So I'm going to have whatever. Um, and this is where normally like my math 
I'm really good at math until I'm like on the spot, but say that 75, and I don't know what all of your numbers are, but that's 225 pieces of business that you're getting from this bucket alone for the year. And depending on what your numbers are, like I'm literally making stuff up because like I said, normally I do this with real estate agents. So it's like, we're doing three pieces of business here and we're doing one here. I'm imagining you guys need a lot more than three or five a month. So <laughs> Um, so then you're going to dive into the next one and you're going to do the same exact activity. I'm going to reach out to title companies. I'm going to call every single title company in the area. And of all the title companies in the area, I want to reach out to 50 this year. I want 20 of them to do business with me. And I want them to give me at least five pieces of business. Yes, so now I've got it, 20 people. As of right now, up now. Well, now I've got... Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I've got 20 pieces of or 20 different title companies sending me business. And I'm getting three pieces. I've got 60 closing or deals from them this year. So you're going to dive into each bucket and every single thing you're going to do is going to have a goal behind it. Because again, this goes back to the whole. If you're not doing money making activities to grow your business, it's never going to go anywhere. It's going to be very difficult to make this full time or to hit the number that you want to hit. So you're going to dive in and you're going to put a number behind everything. <clears throat> um, like Celine said, if your strategy number two is doing um, events, maybe you're going to do events with vendors and you're going to be a part of, and you're going to do something like that. And you're going to use social media as one of your buckets. You're going to reach out and we're going to do this. And for you guys, I will tell you with your business, social media might actually be okay to be one of your buckets because of what you do. It's not like there isn't, it's not like there's a gajillion people out there. It's not like there's, if I go on my page right now, I've got 5,000 friends, probably 4,999 of them are real estate agents. Um, you're not going on and having that. So one of your buckets may be actually social media now that I'm thinking about it. And it may be, you guys need to go in and friend every real estate attorney. You need to go in and um, you need to friend every mortgage person. You need to go in and friend your title companies. And so you need to build out social media so that it's that, and then it is doing um, different things on there and reaching out and doing things. So Celine, actually, I will pull it back. Normally, I don't love to do social media as a strategy. But when you're in a specific businesses, it's actually not bad because you guys are not going to have, uh, you won't have people on social media talking about like notary. It's just not something you're going to see too many people talking about. So but when they do, so this is what I like. Um, I do a lot of networking. I'm sure you know that. And um, there are so many people who know me, know what I do. They know my business. And there are people in the community who will say, I need a notary tonight or on the weekend, or I can't get my mom out. And I get tagged multiple times because I am, because I have all those people who are rooting for me out there. Um, and so the cool thing is you can also find out who I like those posts where people ask, I need uh, somebody to do carpeting. I need somebody to, do, because then you can find out who does those businesses. Yeah. Then what I do is I reach out to those businesses that are tagged and say, Hey, you, you want to meet up for coffee? Because yeah. that's one more way that I can say, I'm going to help your business grow and you can help mine grow. Correct. And what I meant more was you aren't going to have a lot of, you're not going to have other notary people in the same space as you sharing that they're notaries because there isn't a ton of people that that's what their business is. So that's where it's going to be where you're going to have such a huge advantage that if you do share, like you said, that this is what you do, it will stand out to people because there isn't other notaries out there saying, I'm a notary. If you need me, da, 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 like you just don't see that. So you are in a space that you guys could actually utilize um, Facebook and Instagram and even LinkedIn to really help grow your business because there aren't a lot of people that are doing it. You guys might know a lot of people because you're in the industry, but like I know on my page, I've literally never had one person other than Leslie that's like, I'm a notary. Like, this is what I do. And here's some great tips and information. And did you know, and educating people. And so that could be a really good strategy for you. It really is. It's amazing when people find out I'm a mobile notary, they're like, that's such a great niche. And I'm yes. like, 
it's uh, it's <laughs> very normal to other people. It's not. And that's why it's important that we put that out there yeah. that we will go to you. Exactly. So, so that could de definitely be a strategy two, and then you're going to do the same thing with the strategy three. Are you going to work your database? Are you going to work your current sphere? Um, are you going to do pop buys? Are you going to do um, just different things? And then you're going to, again, you're going to dive in. What are five money making activities that you can do to help grow that piece of your business? So by the time you're done, now this is where I'm going to go all the way back to the very beginning. By the time you're done, it, whoops, and you've started building this part out and you're done. Now you've gotten, I've got 200 here. I've got a hundred here. I've got 300 here. I've got 50 here. You start building it out. The reality is, as you build all 15 of these buckets and you go back to your non-negotiable in the beginning, what you needed to do might've been 1000 pieces of business this year. But as you build this out, suddenly this becomes 2000. If you were to do every single one of these things throughout the entire year. Now, this is Mount Everest. You're never going to be able to do 100% of every single one of these because you only have so much time in your day. So again, we're going to build this, we're going to work towards this, and then you're going to have your second highest mountain over here. If you achieve and stretch to hit these goals that you've set, you will fall somewhere in between both of these. And the way to do that is you're going to plan. Like this is where the planning starts to take place. So you've got your annual goals and your monthly goals. You know exactly what you need to do. Now we're going to work on these one week at a time. So <clears throat> what I've always been coached is that if you work, you work one week at a time. Why? Because if things happen, things come up. I have a daughter that has a lot of medical issues. We've had some issues with her. We've had days where literally for 30 days, I've not been able to do much of anything. She's missed 50 days of school this year. So we are, there's struggles. We have things that come up and then there's days that I work 95,000 hours in a day and that's what it feels like. So you work one week at a time so that you can then plan for the next week because of this week, my goal is to call 50 people in my database and my daughter's sick and I can't get the 50 calls and I get to 30. I may say, you know what, week two, I'm gonna hit, instead of 50, I'm gonna make 60. And then I'm going to make 60 on this one to kind of bump over my 250 my or the 20 that I didn't make. The other thing is that as you work through week one, what you're going to do is you're going to find three to five maximum non-negotiable money-making activities that you're going to do. These are the things that you have to do every single week because these are the things that are going to move your needle to making more money and growing your business. And so we always say if you do three to five things, depending if you use social media as one of your buckets and one of them is I'm going to friend 50 people this week, I'm going to send out 20 direct messages, I'm going to comment on 30 people's things that literally should take you an hour, you're not going to have a ton of time that's not going to take it's not going to be super time consuming. If you're going to pick up the phone and you're going to call 20 people, reality is that's not going to be super crazy time consuming. If you're going to an event and you're going to do some events and you're going to, you have three events this week, that's going to get a little bit more time consuming. So two events and friending or commenting to 50 people might be your three activities that you're going to do. And that's what you're going to do for the week. So what I always like to tell people is kind of also think of this in monthly chunks that you're going to break down so that you can figure out how to front load. So if your goal this month is to do, let's say, 100 um, transactions, you want to notarize 100 things or pieces of business, and this is what you want to do. What are the things that you can focus on the most for the first two weeks to front load the month? So if your goal this month is to call 100 people kind of going back to that. Let's say the goal this week is to call 100 people. Instead of saying, I'm going to call 25, 25, 25, 25. If in this week, something crazy happens, now you've kind of like, you've got to erase and replace. So instead of doing 25 across the board, you start here, I'm going to make 50 calls in week one. And I'm going to do 50 reach outs on social media, because I want to reach out to 100 people on social media. You're going to front load your week because, again, if 
this week gets crazy and you can't make your 50 calls, guess what? You've got week three and you've got week four. So always work in one week chunks and never put too much on your plate. If you put 10 money making activities in your first week, which guilty, I did it. I literally got one thing done because one, it was overwhelming Two, I didn't, it was so much that I was committing to because now you are doing things that are actually forcing you to work that I just sat there and looked at it and I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll just do that the next day. I don't really want to do that. I'm going to do it the next day. And then the week ended and I literally got one thing done the next week. I did two things because I was like, Oh my God, it was so overwhelming. I'm just going to focus on two things. And it wasn't overwhelming at all. So I literally finished them in one day. So as you start to build this out, you will see the first week's going to be janky. You're not, it's going to be super uncomfortable for you because you're not exactly sure what money making activities can I fit into the week where I'm not overwhelmed, but I will commit and I will get them done. So you might overload the first week, you might underload the second week, but as you start to work through, you'll start to see if you literally plan, and this goes back to the hours of um, hours worked per week, if you literally start to plan your week where you can take, what can I do in two hours? What can I do to chunk down to literally just focus on money making activities for two hours? It does get a lot easier. So does that make sense to everybody? It does. Absolutely. And it comes down to, and I'm sure you're going to say this, you cannot wait until you need money to start working on making money. Right. You've got to always be advertising, always be putting it out there. Right. Exactly. And your goals need to be achievable, whatever that means to you. Because if you set unachievable goals, you're going to get discouraged and you're, not, you're just going to say, screw it and be done with it. And that's why it's so important to know what your non-negotiable goal is, because again, it goes back to that, oh, I want to make 150,000. And the reality is, is that when you're not making 150,000, you're kind of just discouraged and you're giving up. And the reality is you didn't even need that 150,000. That was just a like goal you that I think when they go to school, I'm pretty sure when real estate agents go to school, they're taught to say they want to make 150,000. Like, I just feel like that's the normal thing. Um, but that's the reality and that's the thing. So it's realistic, it's achievable goals. And the cool thing is, is as you build this out, going with that, you know what you need to hit. And if you build out this huge plan and you just start chunking away at it, this is meant to not overwhelm you. This is where it's literally three to five activities a week. That's it. Like just chunk it down and figure out what you want to do. So kind of leads into this. So I will tell you, I don't know if looking at this freaks anybody else out, but it freaked me out. And so forever, like time blocking, I thought I have to fill every single moment in my day. Even if I'm going to eat lunch, I'm going to, I'm going to have lunch here and I'm going to like sneeze here and I might cough here and I'm going to, and it's overwhelming. And the reality is, is that I always tell people, Stay on a schedule with what you're willing to do and pick your non-negotiables and pick your things that are like your things that you can't give up that you're not going to do certain things on. So my daughter's in school right now um, ish. She's going on homebound. So she won't be um, in school just so we can get through her medical stuff. But I picked her up at school at 207 every day. Like that's it. So my day, unless it's something that's really needed, I can definitely get someone to help pick her up. But my non-negotiable is that I pick my daughter up 98% of the time from school. She needs to be picked up at two. That's what we do. So I schedule my stuff around this. Like this is not a time, you know, 1.30 to 2, 3 o'clock. I'm not scheduling appointments or people unless it's a necessity because there are exceptions, but it's not a normal time that I even remotely offer to someone. Um, I love this because I always tell people when I'm doing this, if you get on social media and you look at people that are successful and entrepreneurs, they're going to tell you, you have to be up at four o'clock in the morning. You need to be at the gym. You got to read five books. You got to check your emails and you got to be ready to rock and roll by 6am. And it makes me want to throw up every time I hear that. I think I tried it for about 30 seconds and I was like, this will never, ever, ever be me. Literally pick what's like good for you and your schedule. I do, um, I do custom graphics. I do content for my clients. I create all of their things. My creative brain comes alive at 8 p.m. Like I am not, 
I will get up in the morning and I will do these things and I'm good. But if you want me to create content, you want me to create graphics and you want me to get like create a marketing plan and do all of these things, let me get through my day with everything crazy that's going on, get my family fed. And then they are kind of off and watching TV and doing their thing. And I'm sitting down and my brain is like, all right, let's do this. So for me, I, like I said, I was up to one this morning, creating stuff and doing things and putting plans and systems together of like marketing for one of my clients. So schedule in the things that, you know, you can get done and do, and make sure that you also are cognizant of your non-negotiable times that you're not willing to get up. And so what I always tell people is, Again, going back to the non-negotiable, your money-making activities. When you're looking at this week one bucket and here's your three things that you're going to do, how do you schedule those into your day? And a lot of people, if you work from home, you have, um, you know, you're not working in an office, you're an entrepreneur, you don't have a boss, you don't have Leslie saying to you, you've got to close 50 this week, you've got to do 50, you have to do 50. If you don't have someone doing that for you, the only person that's going to do it for you is you. So sit down and chunk out. And I tell people I'm baby step all the way. If you don't do it now, schedule from nine to 10. Here's the three things you're going to do. You're going to commit to getting this done in one hour. And then next week, it starts to get a little bit easier. Take two hours. I guarantee that if you focused two or three hours a day on your business, even two, and you literally just focus on money making activities, you would see such a difference in your business. And the more you continue to do that, and as you start to see things happening, you will then want to add a little bit more time. You might add two and a half hours. You might add three hours, but you will start to see a difference if you literally take that time, ignore all of the noise. Don't scroll through Facebook unless one of your goals that day is to add 50 people. Add 50 people and walk away from Facebook. That's it. So get very purposeful with your time, but it does not have to be a nine to five. Eventually it will be, but it does not have to be. And the cool thing is it doesn't have to ever be a nine to five because it is what you make it. And that's the cool part about it. Um, I know we're getting close and we're almost done. So I use this sheet. This is my tracking sheet. So if you're someone that likes to make calls, you're reaching out, you're talking to different people, this sheet is a great way to start tracking your numbers. And again, it looks like some of you guys are like leaning in close. So make sure, I, like I said, my cell phone is in the comments. I will send all of this to you. Um, oh. Make 25 copies because I promise you, as you start to go through, you'll start doing things like, oh, I don't like this idea. I'm going to change it. So what I was do with this sheet is this is a great way to know what your conversion rates are. So you call an estate attorney person, you put an X through number one. You call an estate attorney person, you put an X through number or a slash through number two, you call the estate attorney and you um, get, you put a slash number three. This time someone answers the phone and you talk to someone. Now you circle number three. So your slashes are that you've reached out. How many attempts are you making to reach out? When someone answers, you put a circle around it. So now, you know, okay, I've called three people. One person's answered. That's it. You got that. You move on. Number four, you call slash five, call slash six, call slash seven. You call slash. They answer. You put your circle. They let you set up an appointment. You put an A over it. Then you move on and you keep going. You have your conversation. You do your thing. But as you're calling and it, the directions are on there. So every attempt you slash any person that answers, you circle and any appointment that's uh, anybody that sets up an appointment, you put the A. Now, you know, out of 100 people, I need to call 100 people to get 50 people to answer, to get 20 people to set up an appointment. And then you start like then you go to the next level of the people that set up the appointment. How many of them are actually doing business with you? So knowing these numbers are crucial because, again, it comes down to you may find out you only need to call 100 people to get five people that are willing to work with you to get a thousand pieces of business. Now, how do you then just start continuously, like pull back a little bit, you're going to still work your business because even when you're crazy busy, don't stop working on your business. Because if one person drops off and you need that person to come and fill in, if you can't do it, you can refer it out to someone. 
But that way, if, if things start to slow down and you've got your continuous business coming through, now that client that you were kind of referring out to different people, now they're your client because they're going to step into that role of somebody that may have dropped off. So knowing your numbers is crazy, super critical. Any questions on that? No, but I absolutely love that. It's so, it's so good. And then the last... Oh, sorry. The last two slides are really just challenges and solutions. So it's really kind of sitting down and figuring out what are challenges that you face and then what are solutions in order to get there. And so a lot of people are like, oh my God, I get distracted. I want, I'm at home. I want to do my laundry. I see the dishes sitting in the thing. I do like, what are challenges? And then what are ways that you can say, okay, if a challenge is that you're at home and you know, you can do laundry and you can do your dishes, schedule in your calendar then from nine to 10, I'm doing laundry and I'm doing dishes and that's it. And then follow it. So those are the things that you're going, are your non-negotiables? Like I need to do these things in order to feel balanced. And like I have organization so that I can focus on my business. Um, and so kind of just sit down and really figure out, you know, what are the true challenges you face in your business? And then what are ways that you can work around them in order to be able to grow and do your money-making activities? Absolutely love that. Thank you. So that is my presentation. Um, I don't know if anybody has questions that they want to throw out in a couple minutes or. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Chrissy? Do you want to stop, stop sharing your screen so you can see it? anybody actually yeah to- and I actually I can see I have every, whoop I don't want a new share um I don't want to pause share I do have um I have everybody up so I can see you guys anyways <laughs> okay all right so I love that like as I'm listening to you I was actually taking notes and um and realizing that there's more resources out there that I didn't realize um because my mind is always like, what's the next one? And you know, some of those hundred touches, I love that hundred. I love that, like mark it off as you make those, um, as you call out. But you know, there's more than just estate planning attorneys. It, it dawned on me, um, and I'm going to share this with everybody because I think it's important that when we find, like, we are not each other's competition. We all work together. I have had a few jobs this weekend. I left. Uh, Michigan on Friday and started and still had calls coming in for notarization. So I've been doling them out. Other people have been doing them for me. And um, one of the, one of those came from a bank manager. So for the notaries out there who are looking for another line of maybe, you know, where can I find some more um, business, go into banks Ask to talk to the manager. Ask to talk to who answers the phone when it rings. Because there are a lot of people I have had. I met a woman who um, runs Comerica Bank, one of the branches. And um, she said that she has people calling, calling all the time. Do you have a notary that can come to me? And so now I do those jobs. And in two weeks, I did three jobs just for her like referrals from her. So never would have thought that because I've gone into banks and they all have their own notaries, but people still call the bank because they trust the bank. So go talk to bank managers about becoming a notary, their mobile notary. It's amazing how much um, it solidifies their business by them referring to you. So um, just another person to add to your list for your hundred banks, but only go in the area you want to work in. That's always the most important thing. Um, anyway, does anybody else have any questions for uh, for Chrissy? And if not, that's okay. Um, and if you if you guys are at work or in a position that you can't really talk or say much, my phone is always on, like literally. Um, I think it last night. I think at one in the morning, I was getting like emails or text messages because I was up and I saw them coming in. Um, this morning, I think it's, I heard my phone ding at like six thirty in the morning. So um, my phone's on if I'm awake. Most of the time, if I'm awake, I'm going to answer you if I'm asleep at 630 in the morning, because again, I am not a morning person. Um, as soon as I get up, I will answer. But if anybody needs some one-on-one help, I'm absolutely like willing to jump on a call, a Zoom, whatever, and walk through a lot of this with you personally as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Chrissy. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys want the papers that we did today, I do have them in email. I can send it to you. Debbie's got it too. She can send it to you. Or if you want to reach straight out to uh, Chrissy and get it direct from the source, you can do that. She's always happy to help. She's just an amazing person. And I'm so grateful to have met you. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Thank you. And you guys feel free if anybody reaches out after I did put my cell and my email in the chat. But if anybody didn't grab it, feel free to share my cell and email with everybody in any emails or whatever. Okay. Will do. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Have a great week. Thanks, Thank you too. You. Thank right. you. You're Bye. welcome. Bye-bye.